literally just as I was about to intro the vlog, a car alarm has started going off outside. So I do apologise if you can hear that. I might actually go into a different room um, because that noise is going to be very annoying. Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. This week I'm going to do a very sort of outfit heavy vlog, I think. Lots of feedback last week um, on things to do in future vlogs and lots of people were just like more outfits. Um, so your wish is my command. I will try and document what I'm wearing each day this week because I'm actually on a bit of a roll at the moment and I've been getting dressed properly um, as opposed to just wearing either jeans, um, not jeans, jumpers and a jogger, joggers or um, a variation of just jeans and a jumper. Um, I've actually been wearing different things each day, which has been very good for productivity, I'm finding. I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I love staying in pyjamas and I love staying in my comfies at the moment, but it's not good for my productivity. It's really, really bad. And it um, leads to just me sort of sitting around the house doing nothing. So getting dressed has been quite detrimental to my um, kind of productivity and the amount of work I've been getting done. Um, so I'm going to try and continue that and I will show you what I'm wearing today. I'm about to go out for a walk because the weather's quite nice. So I'll show you what I'm wearing today. I apologise if you can hear that alarm sound. I think it's a building close by. So I'm not sure when that will get switched off, which is great. Um, anyway, today's outfit. As I said, I'm going on a walk. So nothing hugely exciting. I'm wearing this very big, baggy, oversized black jumper from The Row. Black jeans from Gold Sign, which... I think these are the benefit fit. I can't remember. I'll leave details below, but I bought these in the sale last year at some point from Essence. And I have to say in comparison to my weekday denim, I'm not massively impressed with them, especially, I mean, they've kept their color really well. I will say they've kept their black color brilliantly, but the shape, I just feel like they're really sagging in all the sort of wrong places, just like, here and obviously on the knees a bit and just I don't know in comparison to weekday that keep their shape really oh the alarm sound has stopped but keep their shape really well I was a bit gutted um but I I do continue to wear them because they have kept their black colour very very well boots are from Legres I've had these for about I've had them for over a year now, I think, actually. Yeah, well over a year, but I haven't actually featured them on YouTube. I guess because I started vlogging kind of properly in the summer. Um, you haven't had the chance to see most of my winter wardrobe. Um, so yeah, the, these are great. They just go up to just slightly above the ankle. They've got a zip on the back. I don't know if you can see that. And then lace up at the front, very just minimal, slight kind of military combat style, but there's, like there's zero detailing on them, which I love. Very good for stomping around in and then I'll put my coat on. This is a very gray toned outfit. I might change the color of my beanie maybe to red or camel or maybe cream, I'm not sure. Um, coat is from LFM. Now regular viewers uh, who are probably familiar with other coats that I own well, now I have another coat from LFM, that huge, big, chunky navy one that I wear quite often. This is kind of like a, a lightweight trench version of it. On the hanger, it doesn't look like much, but when you get it on, it's actually an awesome coat. The colour is almost, it's not navy and it's not black. It's almost that sort of slate grey, almost like petrol grey. It's it's such a lovely colour. I don't think it's going to show up on camera, but it's it's definitely not black and it's definitely not grey. Um, and it's a little bit thicker than your regular trench. And I don't know if it's fully waterproof, but I know that it's definitely showerproof. And it's just a really nice one to wear because I've got such heavy knitwear underneath. I don't feel like I need a heavy wool coat over it. So this is quite a nice one to wear that still blocks out the wind and the cold, but doesn't feel hugely heavy. A small little pedantic detail that I will um, just uh, go over quickly. Whenever I'm wearing a coat, especially like a trench that has a waistband detail, I always feel like if I've got loads of knitwear underneath, it's really difficult to tie up because it feels really uncomfortable. 
um because you've just got like so much underneath and then it doesn't cinch in properly so something i've been doing is just wearing my belt a little bit loosely so that you still get a little bit of shape there and get a little bit of detail at the front although i am quite an advocate of just wearing my coat you know very triangular but i just feel it's just a nice little detail i'm, I'm not gonna be able to do this one-handed or am i oh kind of you get what I'm saying. And then bag is the La Mer camera bag. Right, I shall see you all in a bit. First run of the week done, first run of 2021 for that matter. The last time I went out running was on New Year's Eve. Um, we won't talk about the rather large hiatus. Um, let's focus on the fact that I'm back out there running again. I ran eight kilometers today. Um, my lungs were on fire. That was really tough. You quickly lose your stamina when you stop running and it's quite frightening how quickly you lose it. I felt like I could barely lift my legs <laughs> during that run um, but you can quickly get it back that's the beauty of running it won't take long for me to get back to the place that I was at back in December give it a couple of weeks if I keep it up that is that's the rule if I keep it up um, uh, but it was like an ice rink out there uh, nearly fell over multiple times but um, I do quite like running when it's cold there's something very refreshing um, when running in the freezing cold. Um, it really feels like you're blowing the cobwebs out. Um, right, I'm gonna go now because I do get a little self-conscious vlogging in public. As ever, another look behind the professional scenes of me trying to shoot. Um, this is what I'm working with today. The light is so bad. I'm trying to take some detail shots of this bag that Le Maire sent me along with the information card that the bag came with. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pouring with rain. It's so dark today. So the only way I can get good light is by kind of elevating the surface that I'm shooting on, which is just paper. So I've dragged the sofa to the window um, and put my photo paper on the sofa. Ideally, what I should buy is a collapsible table with adjustable legs for scenarios like this. But I know a lot of people have said they quite like seeing how photos are taken. And this is the reality. This is what I'm working with today. I've got a book on the sofa here holding the paper up so it doesn't fall down. And I've had to... Um, take my sofa apart. Uh, today's OOTD is made up of bits that you've all seen before. This is the Studio Nicholson Kelvin knit that I got from Essence and then trousers are the Sandro trousers that you've all seen many many times. Um, I know I said in last week's vlog that I was going to try find links to these trousers. I did scour the ends of the internet to try and find any pairs of these left. Unfortunately I couldn't. Um, just for reference, they're called the, the Navam or the Navam trouser, um, N-A-V-A-M. And I did see them on Farfetch before Christmas for like £90, but um, they're gone now, which is very frustrating. Hopefully Sandro will do um, a variation of these trousers again, maybe in the new season. Um, but yeah, I'm very sorry about that. And then trainers are the... Uh, Studio Nixon Moonstar trainers and of course navy Muji socks. Um, I really like this outfit. It's quite a nice comfy one that feels put together still. I have something to show you all. An incredible discovery. Check this out. I know, I know, a lot of you right now are probably thinking, Brit, that's nothing new. Why have you only just discovered a clip-on reading light? In my defence, it hadn't occurred to me to buy a clip-on reading light until very recently. I have reading glasses, which I read and I wear when I'm reading, and they work perfectly fine. The issue that has led me to buy this is that in the evenings when I'm reading, 
I tend to have a lot of low level lights on. I don't like to have the big light on. When I say big light, because big light I think is a very British term, I'm referring to uh, the, the brightest light source in the room. A lot of the time when people say big light, they mean, it, they're often referring to the light on the, in the ceiling, which is um, what I'm referring to. It's too bright and I don't like it. So I like to create something a bit more ambient. So I have uh, a couple of lamps on, but none of them are directly near me. So a lot of the time when I'm reading, I can feel my eyes becoming strained quite quickly because the book isn't very well lit. And I just thought to myself, there must be a device that clips onto your book and lights up the pages. And of course there is. There probably has been for years and years and years. This is not a new discovery. But for me, it is. And it's just brilliant. And I can't... I'm so disappointed in myself for not buying this sooner because it's brilliant. It's got three different lights on it. A warm toned light, a slightly cool toned one, and then a really warm toned one, which is the one I've been using. It's just brilliant. And it's just such a pleasure to be able to sit in the evenings and see my pages perfectly lit up while still having my ambient lights on. Hello, another outfit. I'm just having a computer day today, hence why I've got my glasses on. Um, these are from Oliver Peoples. I think the two most asked questions I get are, where are your glasses from and where is your diffuser from? And the information for both those questions can always be found in the description box. This exact colorway is um, no longer available. These were a limited edition uh, a few years ago. They're clear and then the arms have got gold in them. But I'm pretty sure they do the O'Malley style in some sort of clear variation. They just don't have the gold uh, arms, I don't think. Um, but they come in so many different colors. Um, so if the clear isn't for you, I think there's a lovely tortoise shell. Anyway, I digress. Today's outfit is very relaxed. Uh, very similar to what you've already seen. I'm wearing this jumper from the row again. I'm wearing these trousers from Acne, which I've had for a long time and desperately need to get tailored because I have to, they're too long for me and I have to fold the hem up. Um, I'm wearing my Gaia sandals with socks today. And I know many people are gonna hate this. It's such a Marmite thing to do, but it's really comfortable. Normally I would just be wearing my Birkenstocks and actually I probably will just put Birkenstocks on but this morning I just felt a bit fancy and I was like I'm going to put my row saddles on with socks and it's going to look really cool and chic um, but in reality I'm probably just going to put my Birkenstocks on in a moment. Anyway, um, this is my outfit for today. The socks are a cashmere pair from Arquette. They're proper chunky, they're really nice. Good morning, I'm about to head out and test run my new trainers. I'm just going to take them on a little run just to see how they are um, and start to break them in very slowly. For about a year and a half now, I've been running in New Balance 990s. Had a lot of questions about these trainers. For the most part, they've been great. They're extremely comfortable, extremely springy and cushioned and very supportive. These are the V5 which are the newer version, the V4, uh, the original version, I think. Or have I got that the wrong way around? I'm not sure. But yeah, for the most part, they've been great, but I have been using them for, like I said, about a year and a half now, and they have come to the end of their life. And I've got some new trainers that I thought I'd show you because they're extremely striking. Um, they were sent to me by ASICS. Now, I never get sent running trainers, so I was very taken aback when they got in touch. But even though they are gifted to me, I have used ASICS trainers before. Um, when I first went for my gait analysis years ago, ASICS were the first proper pair of trainers I really had. Um, before that, I'd been running in just sort of like flimsy, thin little Nike trainers. Look at them. <laughs> They're very, very bright. But, I mean... You won't miss me in these, will you? There's so many reflective elements to them. They are called the Gel, Gel Kyrois, Kyrois. But um, I've had two pairs of A6 trainers throughout my running journey and they've all been great. Um, these look extremely bouncy, which is promising. When I'm running, I tend to run 
like my feet slightly, like my ankles slightly bend inwards. So with trainers, I need support on the back here to kind of straighten out my heel and as much support around the ankle area as well to stop my ankles from rolling in because I do have a tendency to completely run my ankle when I'm running, which isn't good. Um, so I just need as much support as possible around the ankle area and the heel, um, which is why I go for chunky trainers and why thinner, sort of flimsier trainers aren't best suited for me. But that's not to say that thin trainers are bad. It just depends on your running style, really. Look at them. They are bright. Um, as you can see, I did not buy any running jacket. Some of you might remember way back before Christmas. I was looking at buying a new running jacket, something that was of this kind of colour, but just couldn't decide on anything in the end. Um, and I've just kept this, which is fine, but it is really quite manky. It's got holes in it. It's got bits missing. It just feels a bit gross, but it's still serving a purpose. And until I decide on something new, it will continue to be my running jacket. Right, I'm going to go on a little 5k and I'll be back to let you know how I got on. I don't know where that energy came from, but five kilometers turned into 10 kilometers. So first impressions of the trainers is very good. I won't show you them because they're absolutely covered in mud and they're by the front door. I've started running around a new lake, which is beautiful, but at the moment it is an absolute bog. So my trainers are covered in mud. Um, the time is quarter past 11, and I have a Zoom call at 12. So I really need to jump in the shower and make myself a little bit more presentable. So I shall see you all in a bit. Okay, full transparency. This isn't what I'm properly wearing today. This is just something that I have worn for a portion of the day. This blue Studio Nicholson jumper, which is showing up extremely bright on camera. It is bright in real life, but not quite as bright as the camera is picking up, is an amazing jumper. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the colour of it. I just love everything about it. But I have to admit, I found it a little bit difficult integrating it into my wardrobe. The, the easiest way I find to wear it is with white jeans. And I do wear white jeans quite often, but it still feels quite limiting, especially um, with outerwear. I'm struggling, like it doesn't look right with black. It doesn't look right with navy. Um, so I'm really struggling to just pair it with anything but white jeans. So this morning when I was um, getting dressed, I went to put the default combo of white jeans and this jumper on and I thought, actually, no, I'm going to play around and see if I can make this work because it's, it's a bright colour, but I feel like blue's fairly an easy colour. So I discovered that it goes great with grey, which is awesome because I do have a grey coat uh, and it looks very good with this chocolate brown colour, which is going to sh it's showing up really weird on camera, but it is a kind of burgundy-ish brown colour. But yeah, it looks really good with these two colours. Do we agree? Um, it also looks very good with camel. So the other castle coat I've got, the sort of more orangey camel one, looks awesome with that actually. But yeah, sometimes I just do this, like I wake up in the morning and I procrastinate quite a bit by doing the whole shop your own wardrobe thing and that's what I did this morning. Um, but I'm quite pleased that I've managed to put together another outfit um, and I do wear these trousers quite a lot so that's nice to know that I can pair that this jumper with these. The, sh the shoes I must admit were a little difficult. I put my row uh, derby shoes on which are also a sort of chocolatey brown colour but maybe a pair of trainers might look a bit better like a pair of off-white trainers or something. Shoes difficult uh, but apart from that colour combo I think is very good. Okay I thought I'd just put the camel version on to show you how good it looks with the blue. I actually think I prefer this colour with blue. Just, I'm really liking what's going on here a lot. It's just a shame it's not quite warm enough to wear something like this. I guess I could put some heat tech on underneath, but 
don't know, just feels like this is a bit more for when it gets close to spring. Anyway, I will keep this one in here ready for when the weather's a bit better. I think it's time for a book chat. I have not updated you on my reading endeavours um, recently, or for a few weeks anyway, so I shall do that now. Sorry, I'm just... Did I make notes? No. I've only just started making notes about the books I'm reading so that when I talk about them here in the vlog, things are a bit more coherent. So I do apologise. I have read a total of five books since I last spoke about books. Um, I'll do them in order that I read them in. The last book that I updated you on was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I'm not going to talk about this book too much because Firstly, I don't feel the least bit intellectual enough to give this book the review that it deserves. Um, and secondly, I think this book has been so widely spoken about, and I know so many people have read this book already, and have read it multiple times in many cases, but I just don't feel like it needs to be reviewed massively. Um, what I will say is, is I did actually enjoy it in the end. When I last spoke about the book, I did say I was struggling. Um, and I feel like it was sort of around the maybe sort of like between 50 to 100 page mark I started to enjoy it which sounds a bit silly doesn't it to kind of persevere persevere through that many pages to finally enjoy a book but it is very long and I feel like the sacrifice of just getting through the first 50 pages isn't too much of a struggle in the grand scheme of the entire book. Um, there's just a lot of scene setting at the beginning and there is a lot of uh, references to Greek history and language which just went straight over my head. But speaking to several people about the book, they also had the same problem. Um, so I did persevere in the end and I really enjoyed it. It is quite long and there were points where I felt like it was a little bit too slow for me. However, as I got closer and closer to the end, I found myself not wanting the book to end, which kind of contradicts my complaint about it being so long. I don't really know how that works out, but I was like, it has been really long, but in some sense, I just don't want this story to end. I want to keep finding out what happens to the characters. So I think anyone who has maybe tried to read it and not managed to get through it, maybe give it another go, just keep persevering. Um, if it's one that's been on your bookshelf for a while and you just haven't given it a go, then I do recommend. I did enjoy a lot. Okay, after that, I then read... Am I missing a book? No, I'm not. When I read like long books like that, I then like to read books in between that I like to call palette cleansers. So sometimes with a book that's this heavy, I'll then be like, right, I just need to read something short or just something a bit more light-hearted light to almost like cleanse my mind and then get ready for the next book. Almost like, you know how when you smell candles and you smell too many candles, so then you have to smell, is it the coffee bean, to clear and then you can start smelling again. That's kind of what I do with books. So after I finished The Secret History, I read Miss Ice Sandwich by Mieko Kawakami or Miko Kawakami. She also wrote uh, Breasts and Eggs, which I have on my bookshelf, but I haven't read yet. It's very short. I guess you'd call this a novella. I read it within a couple of hours. I just sat one evening after dinner reading it. Such a lovely story. Just so beautiful. I, I think with many um, Japanese writers, they have this beautiful way of, I guess, romanticising the everyday, which kind of is very fitting for what I wrote in last week's vlog description box about how... I'm craving the big moments, but then it's when I read things like this where I'm like, oh, they have this really lovely way of making me kind of appreciate the everyday again. It's just a very nice little love story about a young boy who, I guess, kind of becomes infatuated with um, a woman at the supermarket who sells sandwiches. It's very, very nice. After my palette cleanser, I then read Tana French in the Woods. This is a crime slash thriller novel, maybe a slightly psychological thriller, that follows two murder detectives investigating a child murder in Ireland. Uh, they are a 
male female partner detective duo and what I really liked about this book was that it was equal parts about the crime and equal parts about the detectives themselves which I think is quite uh not unusual but you don't get that often in these kinds of books so much of the story is always focused on the crime and who done it and you don't necessarily find out a lot about the detectives investigating the crime so this was there was so much of this book that was about the detectives themselves and the ways in which especially the male detectives of past experiences become entwined with the crime that they're investigating I have to admit, I did find the protagonist, the male detective, extremely irritating at times. He just, the way he reacts to some situations in this book are really aggravating, but I did enjoy the story as a whole. I did find it a little bit sexist in places, but on reflection I was thinking, is that because it's a true reflection of what it's like to be a female murder detective? you know, in such a male-dominated uh, industry. So when I was thinking of it like that, I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense why it feels sexist, because actually that industry probably is quite sexist towards uh, female detectives. But that being said, it didn't ruin my overall experience of the book, and I think I will read the second one. A few people have messaged me to say that the entire series isn't quite as strong as the first book, but the second book is still quite good. So maybe I'll read the second one and see how I find that. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Did find it quite a page turner. Like I, I felt very enthralled by the book. Um, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, definitely recommend. After In the Woods, I then read Severance by Ling Ma. This book was incredible. It, I don't even know where to start with this book because it was so bizarre to read during what we're going through right now. So it is a post-apocalyptic novel with lots of satire, humorous satire on capitalism. It's very cleverly done, but the events in this book are eerily similar to what we have been going through over the past year. I wouldn't even say it, well, Eerie isn't, doesn't even come close. It's like Ling Ma got a tip off back in 2018 that the pandemic was going to happen and she wrote about it. It's so bizarre. If you find reading about uh, viruses and post-apocalyptic situations anxiety inducing at the moment, this might not be the book for you. I had quite a few people message me on Instagram when I posted about this saying that they actually had to put it down because they just found it a bit too close to home, um, which I agree. There was parts where I was like, <gasps> I mean, I would not want to give too much away, but there's talks about a virus that starts in China. There's talks about closing borders. There's talks about N95 masks and working from home. Like it's all very eerie. And I actually think that the satire on capitalism is so reflective of the kind of fallout of the pandemic that we're seeing at the moment um, and people's attitudes towards like the government and just like society in general. I think it's really cleverly done. A real page turner. I read it in about three days. I actually think I might read it again because I enjoyed it so much. Just a forewarning. It is post-apocalyptic, but it's not post-apocalyptic in the sense that there's flesh-eating zombies. Um, which is why it's almost so close to what we're going through at the moment, because the the virus doesn't turn people into these like ravenous, aggressive zombies that you see in so many post-apocalyptic films and novels. But they do turn into zombies in a sense. It's I'm not going to give too much away. It's really cleverly done. I really enjoyed it. And I highly recommend if you are kind of like into Station Eleven and... That kind of thing. Very, very good. Um, then after that, I read the final book I have to talk about, uh, Lie With Me by Philippe Bessent. This is a French novel that has been translated by Molly Ringwald. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Really quite heart-wrenching. Um, if you are fans of Call Me By Your Name, then I think you will enjoy this book. There are many comparisons between the two. But that both of them are beautiful standalone stories. I don't like, I don't like it when books are sort of like 
compared to so heavily, but it is a good way to, I guess, recommend a book to people. Also, the author of Call Me By Your Name has left a review at the top here, stunning and heart ripping. Um, yeah, it's just the most beautiful, just heart wrenching love story um, between two men, and oh, I loved it. So, uh, and it's also a short one, so I think. It's, um, that was kind of like my palette cleanser, but actually turned out to be um, a real favourite. And I've now moved on to In the Distance by Hernan Diaz, which I'm not going to talk about just yet because I've only read one chapter. Um, so yeah, that's my book update for you all. Um, hopefully, I feel like there's a real mix of genres in there, so maybe, hopefully I've like covered a little bit of everything for everyone. I'm going to show you what I'm wearing now because... That's what I'm doing in this vlog, aren't I? I'm meant to be showing you what I'm wearing every day. And I quite like today's outfit. So let me take you off the tripod and show you what today's outfit is. This mirror is sort of like going back and forth between here and the bedroom, um, just sort of moving bits around in here every day. Um, this jumper is... Oh, sorry, I don't think that's focused on me. There we go, it's better. This jumper is from Uniqlo. It's a lamb's wool one from the women's section. Annoyingly, this brown colour has just disappeared off the website, um, but it is available in the men's section, so there is a possibility of like sizing down in the men's so that it fits. I can't remember what size this is. This is an extra small. You can still see it's quite... It's quite a loose fitting jumper. Um, the chain is from Majuri, it's the one I always wear. Excuse me, I've got like, I haven't got indigestion, but I just feel a bit, you know. Jeans are the Levi's rib cage. I don't know if this color is available anymore. I feel like this is just the story of everything I wear and feature, I'm just like, I don't know if it's available. Sorry, I don't think it's available anymore. So I do apologise if this isn't available. Uh, I love these jeans. I've spoken about them many, many times before. But I'm just wondering whether I could have benefited from getting a longer leg. Annoyingly, I don't know if this is a Levi's thing, but all of their leg lengths are in odd numbers. Whereas most denim do them in even numbers. You get like a leg 28 or a leg 30. Levi's do leg 27, leg 29, which is odd. Great if you're in between the even numbers, but I'm like a true leg 28 and these are 27 and I just feel like they're a little bit too cropped. Oh, my battery's fl flashing um, to say it's about to die. Shoes um, are from the row and that's me for today. I've just been sat uh, steaming and photographing things for Depop because I thought I'd... Oh, that was very loud. Turn that down. Thought I'd do an impromptu Depop upload. Um, so apologies that I didn't do an announcement. I actually just find it quite stressful sometimes when I announce a time because there's this pressure to get everything done um, for a specific time. Also, I'm not shipping outside of the UK at the moment just because Brexit is causing issues with customs fees and uh, the price to ship to Europe at the moment has increased massively since um, we left the EU. So until I kind of figure out how to do that in the most cost effective way, at the moment small items are being are just limited to the UK because it's just not worth me selling like a pair of jeans for £20 and having to charge £10 postage it's just not um I, I I don't know but if you live outside of the UK and you see something on my Depop that you really really want and you think you don't mind paying the large shipping fee or the potential sorry my flat is like directly opposite. I think it's a solicitor's building or um, something. And I can always um, see the people sat in their office working and I kind of could just never tell if they're looking at me or just looking out the window. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, if there's anything that you like, you really, really want and you think to yourself, actually, I don't mind paying the postage charge, 
do message me because I am prepared to post things outside of the UK. It's just whether people want to pay the postage, that's all. Um, so I just feel like I don't want to offer that option. Any, I'm just blabbering now, aren't I? Anyway, I'm going to go for a walk because um, the sun has come out and it looks like there could be an absolutely cranking sunset on the way. So I'm just going to go for a walk and then walk kind of back via the supermarket and get myself groceries for the week. Um, and yeah, I shall um, see you all in a bit. That sunset that you just saw was the result of me power walking up to the top of the heath with about 10 minutes to spare before the sun went down. I wasn't planning on walking that far because the heath is quite far from where I live and to get to the top it's just a very steep incline the whole way. But when I left the house, the sky was giving off good sunset vibes. You know when you can just tell it's going to be a really good one. So I thought, right, I'm going to race to the top and get there just as it was started to really sort of glow. You know, when you get that really bright orange glow, it was so nice because there was loads of other people there who obviously had the same idea. Um, and I love it when stuff like that just brings people together and you're just sat there experiencing the same thing in silence, just in awe. It was really, really nice. Um, I should do that more often, really it's such a there's like benches up there that you can sit on and just watch the sunset i could take a book a flask of tea i should do things like that more often um, anyway i'm now gonna go to the supermarket get myself some dinner and call it a night i think because it's absolutely freezing Good morning, um, it is half past nine. I think I got out of bed at quarter to nine. Um, my ability to wake up early at the moment has completely diminished, but that is probably due to the fact that I'm not really going to bed any earlier than midnight at the moment um, because of sleep anxiety and all that. So yeah, a very late start to the day. Um, also, in my defence, it's pouring with rain. It's just so dull out there, and when it's like that, it, it's it's not very appealing. The thought of getting out of bed, is it? However, I think I'm going to go for a run, which is very unlikely because I don't like running in the rain because it's quite irritating having the rain hit your face. But I could just feel today is going to be really unproductive because the mood is going to sort of pre meditate my the rest of the day for me which is never good and I just don't want one of those days like I've had too many of those days recently so I just thought what's the one thing that will make me feel better today and I know it's going for a run so I'm going to do that and I'm going to get absolutely soaked but I know that future me the me that is waiting the other side of the run will be really thankful and glad that I did it. And actually, within about 10 minutes, once I'm out there, I'll be enjoying it, put my music on, it'll be fine. I won't go for a really long run, just um, maybe like a 20 minute, half hour run. So that's my plan this morning. Also going for a run means I have to have a shower, obviously, and that always peps up a bit. So hopefully that will boost my productivity levels today. Not that I have a huge amount to do. <laughs> I'm gonna edit this vlog when I get back, actually, I'm going to pack Depop orders and post those, do some reading, um, and not a lot else. 
So, oh, I'll show you what I'm wearing when I get back from running as well, because it will be like a sort of comfy at home outfit. What do we have here? <laughs> um, run done, eight kilometers, absolutely soaked, but very refreshing. I've just had my lunch and I thought I'd show you what I'm wearing and just talk to you about my hair because <laughs> I washed it and tried to dry it using the diffuser attachment on my hair dryer. I follow an account on Instagram called The Hair Bros. They're a hairdressing duo. I think they used to work at Hershison's or some trendy salon in London that I've never been to. And they often talk about techniques to help you embrace your hair's natural wave or curl or just natural state. Lots of drying techniques and product techniques. Honestly, what? Where has this come from? Um, and they always bang on about using the diffuser bit of your hairdryer. So that is what I try to do today in order to create a lovely beachy looking wave. But something tells me it hasn't quite worked. Definitely doesn't look like all of the uh, models on their Instagram page. Um, I don't have curly hair, but I don't have straight hair, I've got something in, that lies in between. And it's because the top half of my hair is all my natural colour. So that dries in its natural state. The bottom half still has a lot of bleach in it. So that's lost its natural colour and its natural, sorry, it's like its natural texture and its natural wave. So it's very sporadic in the way that it dries. Some bits are wavy, some bits are straight. I mean, look, we've got this bit here that has dried poker straight, like how, and then I mean, and then we've got this thing. <laughs> so there's really no rhyme or reason to how my hair dries. And I thought, right, I'm going to try this diffuser technique and see if I can get it to dry in a bit more of a, like a uniformed way. To be honest, this side's not too bad, actually. This side, not so much. I mean, I put oil and other bits in it, but ugh, it's still so frizzy. Um, but yeah, I'm just on a bit of a crusade trying to embrace my hair's natural state, but just getting quite annoyed with it. Um, anyway, let's talk outfit because that's more interesting than my hair. I'm wearing this navy uh, cable knit, sorry, I forgot the term then, cable knit jumper from Anne Daughter. I've just got a black long sleeve top underneath and then keeper cut cropped jeans from and other stories in a size 26 so these I've got them in a 25 and a 26 and the 26 I wear when I want a slightly baggier looser fit very good for lounging around the house in uh, shoes for shuffling around the house in are Birkenstock Boston's and of course I have matched my socks with my jumper navy socks from Muji that's me for today I'm sat editing the vlog and I've just got to the bit where I'm speaking about Severance, the book, and it has reminded me to mention a film that I watched a couple of nights ago that I think some of you might enjoy if you are into the post-apocalyptic zombie genre in films as well. It's called Alive. It's a Netflix film that came out in the summer last year. And I must have completely missed it. Maybe there wasn't much press around it because I'd never heard of it. I only found it through Googling top horror films of 2020 because I felt like I'd exhausted most of the top horror films of last year. So I wanted to find something new or something that I'd maybe missed and found alive. It's a Korean uh, film that reminded me of Train to Busan quite a bit in the way so much of it is about the survival. What I enjoyed about Alive was there was no build up. There's no, you're not really given any context as to where the virus came from or anything like that. Within about two minutes of the film starting, it's straight into the action. There's no messing around. I really, really enjoyed it. And just thought I'd mention that in case anyone else is looking for a new zombie film. If you find things like that a bit anxiety inducing at the moment, maybe give it a miss. But as a society, we're not quite at the bit yet where we're um, flesh eating zombies. So that kind of stuff doesn't give me too much anxiety right now. 
The other thing, because I'm probably going to sign off the vlog now, the other thing I wanted to ask is next in the next week's vlog, I'm going to do a running chat because throughout this vlog, I've whilst I've been editing it, I've noticed I've touched on running several times, but I never go into much depth about it. I just sort of say my distance and say if it was good or not. And I do this because I just don't think people find it interesting. As a runner myself, I don't find it interesting listening to people talk about running. I definitely don't find it interesting listening to people talk about their pace or their distance or anything like that. It's interesting to talk to runners about, say, like trainers and playlists and things, but for the most part, I'm not interested. So I just thought, you know what, no one's going to be interested. But I'm getting an increasing amount of questions about running each time I mention it. So I thought maybe next week's vlog, I'll do a, maybe a, like a 15 minute section where I talk about running. So if you have any questions that you would like me to answer in regards to my running journey, because I've been running for seven years. And although I'm not a professional and I've not, I'm not hugely educated on, I guess, the science and the, uh, the physio and that kind of thing behind running, I've had quite a journey with it. So I, I can talk about running for a long time if people wanted me to. And I keep getting people ask me to talk about my journey with running and uh, what's the other most common question? How to get into running. And I thought, you know what, actually I'll do a little segment in next week's vlog and I'll timestamp it so that if you're not interested, you can skip through it. So yeah, leave me some comments, um, sorry, some questions in the comments section if there's anything you really want me to touch on in regards to running. And I think that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's rather outfit heavy vlog. I will do my best to document more clothing and fashion-y types of things. So I know that is predominantly what people like to see. And actually it's kind of what I like to show. So, but it's just remembering to do that. And also because I wear so much of the same thing all the time I think people just get bored but actually in reality I think lots of people like the comfort of repetition at the moment myself included anyway I'm going to sign off here thank you so much for watching this week um, and I'll see you in next week's vlog